good evening and after i would say a lot of time we have been requesting mr sham padman an advocate in the high court of kerala to share his knowledge as those who have been connected with beyond law clc they also know that sham padman also run a youtube channel and that's how we initially got connected during the covid 2019 just as ram kumar was also connecting point be that as it may being on a sunday and that to in and around the dashera when the people join us it gives you a sense of happiness that people are willing to learn the knowledge and someone from like sham padman who will be taking his session on the medical negligence under the consumer protection act a critique because we keep keep on reading day in day out even day before yesterday there was a judgment on this medical negligence by the honorable supreme court how this issues crept in what are the general defenses or what you can ensure while filing the claim petition uh, in the consumer protection act how it goes about it this is what will be the today's session and meanwhile one dr belgal says god is great dear sham padman sir i wishing you a speedy recovery thank you and i'm seeing a lot of followers who used to come during the covid they have also logged in it shows that sham carries his own following and that too when it's already sham in everywhere in india or do you sham thank you for making this sham sham ke naam thank you very yeah. much vikas uh, it's wonderful to be back on this platform and um uh, uh, the topic which i would like to address or rather share my thoughts on is uh, medical negligence adjudication under the consumer protection act 2019 uh before i start off with the topic as such let us get certain clarifications regarding the new consumer protection act i'll take less than 5 minutes regarding that number one is that there was a doubt expressed or doubts were abound that whether medical negligence or health service is covered and governed by the consumer protection act 2019 as you all know the ima uh, versus vp shanta case uh 1986 act there was in uh, unequivocal language the supreme court said that as long as services are being rendered by uh, the health service or rather the medical men it is covered and governed by the consumer protection act no change has come in the new act as such the only doubt that was expressed was that in the initial draft uh, even though medical service was specifically mentioned in the definition of service later it was not and it was uh, Uh, said that it was some sort of an exclusion but if you go uh, an impartial appreciation of the consumer protection act and if you read ima versus vp shanda it would be very clear that services of any description uh, it is not confined to any uh, whether it's legal service whether it is uh, engineering service whether it is any other service all services comes in unless and until it is specifically excluded if you just see the consumer protection act section 1 itself that is uh, section 14 i believe 14 save us otherwise expressly provided by the central government by notification this act shall apply to all goods and services and we have couple of couple of decisions that has come up from the kerala high court bombay high court and to a certain extent uh, blessed by the supreme court because even though uh, 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 the matter was not addressed in extensio on merits but uh the challenge raised against these decisions were it was held that consumer protection act 2019 is equally applicable to uh, uh medical provision uh remains unchallenged so that is as far as uh, coverage is concerned now the second aspect or the other aspects which may which we will have to keep in mind both as a medical man as well as a legal man in assisting persons to get justice because lawyers does not just uh, appear for uh, uh patient party alone but also for doctors so in that uh, uh, perspective i would say that few things that uh, everybody has to keep in mind is the change the drastic change that has been brought about in pecuniary jurisdiction and territorial jurisdiction under 2019 act i'm sure that this platform would have witnessed many a debate on this topic but to set things in perspective and to lay the foundation of uh, my my presentation i would just say that now it is as good as unlimited pecuniary jurisdiction why because the component of uh, compensation has been taken away earlier it was the value of the goods sir or services and the compensation claim now the compensation claimed element has been excluded from the definition or when pecuniary jurisdictions to be reckoned and now it is only the amount paid 
as consideration for the services availed. So uh, to put it in a very simple example, somebody, I mean, well, let us take medical uh, 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 science itself or, 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 or doctors and hospitals case itself. A patient walks into a hospital, uh, he undergoes a treatment, he becomes a paraplegic or loses a uh, limb or even his life. The total consideration he would have paid would have been 50,000, uh, 1 lakh, 5 lakh, 10 lakh, 20 lakhs, whatever it is. Now, as you know, the pecuniary jurisdiction of the district forum is up to 50 lakhs. It is interesting that the act has not been amended by, by, by way of uh, uh, a rule. It is even uh, the latest barrack, if you take, you will find the earlier, uh, I mean, uh, the pecuniary jurisdiction it might uh, misguide persons. But uh, after that, invoking that uh, proviso to that specific provision, the central government has notified that up to 50 lakhs is the pecuniary jurisdiction of the district forum. And above 50 lakhs and up to 2 crores is the that of the state commission and above that of the national commission. Now, coming back to the point, if somebody avails the treatment and the services has been, um, uh, uh, the amount paid as consideration is less than 50 lakhs, he can approach the district commission irrespective of the fact that the compensation claims runs to cross or even about that. So uh, it is not the compensation component, but it is only the value paid for the service. Now, what is the difficulty that arises? Uh, I mean, the, the, the most important thing that, uh, uh, I, I, that comes to my mind regarding this aspect, though it may look beneficial, but in the long run, I, I, because I'm addressing this uh, uh, August uh, enlightened uh, audience, you also think about it. For filing an appeal, the provision has not been diluted in any manner, but only made stringent. Earlier, it was 50% of the amount awarded from a district forum to, uh, uh, now it's all commissions, district commission to state commission. It was either 50% of the money or uh, the monetary component awarded or 25,000, whichever is less. Now that aspect has been taken away. So it is 50% of whatever is awarded. Now just imagine a complaint is filed before a district forum. The consideration paid is below 50 lakhs. So I can approach the district commission. It so happened that 1 crore, 2 crore or 3 crore has been awarded. I'm just uh, placing an example. Then to file an appeal to get even uh, it numbered, let, uh, let alone uh, it being considered on merits, what is required is deposit of 50% of the amount, you'll have to beg, borrow, or steal the amount and deposit it, and there is no other way you can even uh, maintain an appeal. Then alone comes the issue of uh, admission, and at that admission stage also, there is another uh, uh, hurdle that is uh, almost all uh, state commissions in the country says that you'll have to deposit further amount as a precondition for stay of the order. So it works out as if you deposit the entire amount. So that is one aspect uh, which might be counterproductive. Now, the second aspect which we as uh, the stakeholders in this one, either for the doctor community or for the patient community, should keep in mind is regarding territorial jurisdiction. Territorial jurisdiction has now been made at par with something like intellectual property uh, legislation wherein wherever the plaintiff is having the principal place of office, etc. Likewise, now in this new act, the complainant can file the complaint where he is residing or working for gain. The second aspect is very vague. The first one, of course, if he has got a permanent place, I'll just take one example. I go to, I mean, I take treatment from uh, Kashmir for that matter, and I'm staying at Kanyakumari. I can file a complaint in Kanyakumari stating that it is my place of residence and the act says that I can. And the doctor or the hospital will have to come all the way to the district commission or if it's uh, above 50 lakhs, the consideration, etc., the state commission for that matter in Tamil Nadu, or for that matter, if it's somewhere in Kerala or uh, other places. Why I uh, emphasize on this to this August Assembly is because next time a patient walks in, this applies to everybody, even to lawyers. Don't, don't think it's just against uh, uh, doctors or uh, medical community. If a, a client comes to me, he avails some sort of, uh, uh, I'm stationed in Kerala. He is, uh, let us imagine he's from somewhere north, northwest, northeast, I don't know, wherever it is, or some other part of the country. He can go back there, leisurely file, here, the, the, the complaint against me, the, I'll have to go all the way to that place to defend it. This may also be counterproductive to a certain extent because before, if this goes on like this and if it uh, uh, percolates to all level and everybody become conscious of this, next time, uh, before I or a medical man for that matter, I means we, uh, the uh, lawyer community or any, any service sector community would first insist on seeing the proof of address or rather where exactly your geographical positioning 
is and unless and until i fancy uh, taking a vacation every now and then to that uh, place i may deny service so this may result in denial of services as well so in this and for that matter let us also be thankful to the apex court the supreme court is ceased of the matter in proceedings that is pending before it and uh, uh, in one of the uh, interim orders that has been passed it has even mentioned it was even mentioned that there was no proper legislative impact study done and whatever study that was done was during the covid period and uh, that does not uh, make any sense for that matter now uh, let alone all these things let us come to our topic i mean i just wanted this to be said as a uh, uh, introduction because uh, who are, or whatever side we are on these things will have to be kept in mind and uh, when we think of enhancing the performance of the justice dispensation machinery as stakeholders each and every one of us has got a responsibility to proactively participate and see to that uh, requisite changes or 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 uh, amendments or for that matter whatever i mean even interpretations can be had uh, regarding this now coming to um, the the topic that has been assigned to me let us first understand the fact that health or uh, a person's um, uh, right to have access to health or emergency medicine has been read now read into now means uh, during the course of uh, different decisions have been read into the uh, fundamental rights by incorporating it as a facet of life which is contemplated under article 21 of the constitution the few decisions which uh, might throw light onto it is the earliest one i believe is um, 1984 Supreme Court 802. It's also reported in 1984 3 SCC 161. That is Bandhu Mukti Morcha versus Union of India and others. Wherein this right to live with human dignity enshrined in Article 21 derives its life breath from the directive principles of state policy and particularly clauses E and F of Article 39 and Articles 41 and 42. And at, at the least, therefore, it must include protection of the health and strength of workers men and women and of the tender age children against abuse opportunities facilities etc etc this was followed in 1989 by paramanand katara versus union of india and others that is 1989 volume 4 sec 286 wherein every citizen brought for treatment should instantaneously be given medical aid to preserve life and therefore and thereafter the procedural criminal law should be allowed to operate in order to avoid negligent death and in the event of breach of such direction apart from any action any action that may be taken for negligence appropriate compensation should be admissible that was the doctrine of the golden hour an accident victim who reaches the hospital if he gets the treatment within that uh, short span of time there is always a possibility that his life could be saved but if you are to think of the legal intricacies of giving evidence etc etc and uh, if it's delayed so and you cannot even take up if you are running a hospital that I don't have an emergency unit, etc. You cannot because the Supreme Court made it a mandate that every citizen in this country has got a right to get emergency treatment. And uh, thereafter, in Pashim Banga Keth Masur Samadhi was the state of West Bengal. That is 1996, Volume 4, SCC 37. The court declared that the right to life enshrined in the Indian Constitution under Article uh, 21 imposes an obligation on the state to safeguard the right to life of every person and that preservation of human life is of paramount importance. This obligation on the state stands irrespective of constraints in financial resources. The court stated that denial of timely medical treatment necessary to preserve human life in government-owned hospitals is a violation of this right. Later, there are many decisions. I thought I'll just deal with the... the, the, the uh, uh, decisions that set the trend. Now... Regarding medical negligence, there is uh, one interesting observation made by the High Court of uh, Kerala in um, Dr. T.T. T. Thomas versus Srimadhi Elisa and others. That is reported in AAR 1987 Kerala 52. I'll just read that small paragraph. It is illuminating. Devaluation of standards in professional ethics is a dangerous trend. Its proliferation in medical profession is more calamitous than in any other professional or occupational areas. There can be few, if any, professions other than that of medicine about which it is possible to fashion a television series entitled Your Life in Their Hands. It was, uh, in fact, a reproduction from uh, Law and Medical Ethics by Mason and McCall Smith. 
failure to make a proper diagnosis sometimes may be the consequence of human error but when diagnosis is correctly made the imperative duty of the medical man to take adequate and prompt curative steps need not be over emphasized for any inertia on his side is at his risk as to all cause and consequences if the allegations in the case are true this would fall within the amplitude of the above proposition we all know that mistakes errors and defaults are prone to occur in all profession medical profession is no exception but unlike other professions the consequence of such medical um uh, or uh, default or would be more drastic and deadly as invariably a human life would be at stake either it might be life or limb the issue gets more complicated as medical science is not an exact science and it is accepted starting from uh, uh, decisions like sideway uh, bolam etc that medical science has not been and is not an exact science in spite of the best care caution and attention on the part of the treating physician there is always a possibility that something may go wrong for no fault of his it's very easy to understand it is it's like saying that i may not be an i may not be allergic to a particular drug the symptoms i exhibit and x y or z exhibit may be the same but while treating with that drug something can happen it need not necessarily because of any negligence that is what the supreme court said uh, and even the kerala high court and other high court said that it is not as something as the man with the smoking gun syndrome something has gone wrong so somebody should be held fault with so if it happens in an institutional thing then invariably uh, the hospital uh, will be uh, proceeded against and then another aspect which we as uh, the stakeholders uh, of this very important topic should keep in mind is that there is no dedicated health law in the country uh, uh, the, the the different provisions whether it is if you are proceeding against the doctors or the medical man either under the law of torts or criminal jurisprudence or anything else is scattered in different for example if you take consent it's very very i mean uh, uh, what is the age of consent or uh, uh, what is the definition of negligence criminal negligence there is no distinction made in ipc regarding professional negligence and occupational negligence but the supreme court of course in jacob matthew case and other decisions said that this has to be seen in two different uh, ways and uh, uh, you cannot equate one with the other and unless un and until there is a, a, an element of gross negligence which is not there in the statute gross negligence you cannot proceed against a medical man for uh, medical malpractice under the criminal law now what is negligence if uh if we if we take uh, the historical perspective uh, we have the earliest one uh, 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 as seen from the code of hammurabi that is uh, the king of babylon it is stated if the doctor has treated a gentleman with lacet of bronze and has caused a gentleman to die or has opened an abscess of the eye for a gentleman with bronze lacet and has caused the loss of gentleman's eye one shall cut off his hands barbaric of course but that was the way in which uh, 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 justice was dispensed in in those times now the recent trends it says that uh, uh, the way in which medical negligence is perceived is that in the case of medical man negligence means failure to act by the standards of reasonably competent medical men at that time there may be one or more perfectly proper standards and if conforms to one of these proper standards then he is not negligence i shall come to bolam and bolido later now historical evolution of medical uh, negligence across the world then you will say that from the days of uh, 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 hammurabi the babylonian times it it, it progressed to um, uh, more more uh, what do you call uh, it's not as uh, common calling doctrine that is persons who practice common calling meaning probably a skilled profession to act as would any reasonable competent person practicing under like conditions or be liable for an action of trespass of case the words negligence and malpractice were strangers to 14th century common law medieval physicians were made answerable for malpractice and this liability grew from the basic concept of negligence conceptually therefore medical malpractice actions were from their earliest origin no different from ordinary negligence suits the term malpractice did not arise until the early 19th century then based on common calling doctrine that is uh, the reign of henry iv which i don't want to dilate now then medical negligence jurisprudence based on professional custom came around 
then medical negligence jurisprudence based on local rule that is locality rule uh, since 19th century uh, common law provides that a physician's duty is not measured by the ordinary rules of reason reasonableness but rather by professional custom now all these things have been later articulated uh, we have cases starting from 1969 uh, or rather we'll say that uh, from bolum in bolum what the case says that uh, in that the facts of the case are this uh, electroconvulsive therapy was given that too without using muscle relaxant uh, there were two bodies of opinion one said that it has to be given the other said it need not be given uh, this patient was not given. He sustained fractures and some other injury. Then the court said, uh, the, the, the Apex Court of uh, UK said that uh, following one reasonable body of opinion cannot be said to be negligence just because there is another body of opinion possible. Now, the elements of uh, negligence can be uh, articulated into four. Number one is duty of care. So if you want to establish a case of professional negligence and uh, uh, these four ingredients will have to be proved and established. Number one is duty of care. Must have, there, must have, there must be a legal obligation to provide care. Number two is breach of that duty. There should be some act or omission which amounts to breach. Then what the courts are concerned is not with the consequence, but with the causation. In the chain of causation, this act or omission should have uh, been uh, the, 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 the main cause for the uh, damage cause. And finally, it is damage. Patient must suffer harm or injury as a result of the breach. If you have to establish this before a court of law, what is required is expert evidence or literature covering the field which is accepted, peer-reviewed uh, uh, articles or standard textbooks, which would show that the act is not correct. So to put it very simply, I would um, uh, say that breach of duty of care resulting in injury or damage is negligence. So what the courts will look into is that did the specific doctor act in such a manner which a reasonable and prudent doctor in the given circumstances would not have acted or omitted to do something which a reasonable and prudent doctor in the given circumstances would have done. So it's a question of act or omission. So in a court of law, if one has to succeed or one has to defend either way, what has to be shown by the patient party is that there was an act or omission on the part of the treating doctor or the hospital, which a reasonable and prudent doctor in the given circumstances would do or would not do. Likewise, the uh, natural corollary or, 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 or the defense possible for the medical man is that he can say that in spite of the best care, caution and attention on the part, on his part, something went wrong and he cannot be found fault with because he has uh, subscribed to the universally accepted standard medical protocol and also there was no act or omission on his part. These are the two uh, opposing weighing factors uh, which uh, you may have to establish in a court of law depending on, upon which side you are. Now, how do we establish this? Number one is documentation. As far as a medical man is concerned, proper contemporaneous document is highly necessary. And unless and until you have this proper documentation, it is just like saying that uh, no documentation, no defense, poor documentation, poor defense, good documentation, good defense. It is reiterated. I shall come to the decisions and authorities later. Um, now, what we can prove and establish in a court of law is by adducing expert evidence. The expert cannot just talk on air. He has to base his uh, findings not only on his uh, professional and uh, expertise uh, knowledge in that field, but it has to be based on something that the concerned, the accused or the opposite party, doctor or hospital would have done. That is only possible if documentation is there. So unless and until there is proper documentation, no defense, proper defense is possible. Likewise, unless and until you can show from the documents that there was an act or omission on the part of the concerned doctor, which amounts to negligence, a complainant cannot succeed also. It has been reiterated many a times that the court cannot impose or superimpose its wisdom on, on these aspects because uh, these are all uh, 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 
areas which requires special expertise skill and as, as long as the medical science is not an exact science and human reaction to different medications is not uniform it depends from person to person and in the same person depending upon his immunological compromise status or any other comorbidities it may it may change from time to time so all these factors has to be taken into consideration and when i come to the different decisions and authorities that is i mean including those of the recent ones you will understand why this assumes importance now it has been emphasized that no court of law can base its decision as far as professional negligence is concerned on surmises conjectures or for that matter assumptions for one thing one has to keep in mind one important factor a decision against a medical man and for that matter any 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 professional uh, of negligence or malpractice amounts to capital punishment it is professional death sentence as far as that person is concerned so like in the ordinary law we say that it is only in the rarest of the rare cases that such a decision will be rendered or returned likewise unless and until there is proper empirical evidence suggesting that the consequence that has been complained of was on account of or an act or omission which was the causation for it to put it very simply unless and until it is specifically proved and established that such and such specific act or omission contributed or resulted in this uh, consequence one may not succeed and likewise unless and until the opposite party uh, there, uh, there, uh, there there has been a lot of hue and cry regarding what exactly is the burden of proof onus of proof regarding medical negligence of course like any other case the initial burden is always on the complainant we need not go to section 101 102 etc of the evidence act but the initial burden discharge his burden he had to prove that such and such things have happened and such and such things would not have happened had there been proper care there he can also take uh, uh, take recourse to the principles of uh, uh, res pa ipsa locator uh, which says that the thing speaks for itself for example if a mop is left behind or or or, or a cotton goes or even uh, we have a couple of cases in kerala where in uh, certain instruments were left behind uh, the allegation is that uh it is has to be decided so the these things are so glaring so once these things are so glaring there is no need for any further discharge of burden on the part of the complainant then the onus completely shifts on to the other party then it is for the hospital or the concerned doctor to prove and establish by adducing including expert evidence that there was absolutely no negligence on their part it is in spite of the best care caution and attention on their part that these things have happened and that they have treated the patient as per the universally accepted standard medical protocol so that is as far as um the concept of uh, or rather how to start or how uh, how the uh, onus or burden is concerned now let us assume that it is in a death case so in death cases the importance of autopsy or for that matter postmortem has been emphasized in very many decisions one decision which i can directly lay my hand on is that of the kerala high court wherein it is mohammad tariq ak and others versus savera hospital private limited and others 2019 volume 5 khc 88 to fasten liability on a medical practitioner the court has to ascertain whether there was intentional act or omission or failure on his her side in administering treatment to one's patient if only there was breach or failure to follow the practice acceptable on the part of the medical professional and follow the uh, and reasonable care attention and requisite skill expected from an expert were not provided to save a patient from acute emergency negligence can be attributed against a doctor a doctor who is treating a patient may only think to relieve him her from his suffering and the well being of the patient will be the only aim of the doctor and normally with all care and skill the doctor will try their level best to save the patient normally a doctor will be taking the effort and risk even in cases where hard and risk factors are involved with the ultimate aim to save the patient and he will be satisfied only if the best treatment is provided to the patient and regarding uh, autopsy a post mortem examination autopsy is a surgical procedure conducted by the experts in the field which consists of a thorough examination of a corpse by dissection of each and every part to determine the cause and manner of death and to evaluate and find out the disease or injuries which resulted in the death of the person when ultimately death occurs 
a postmortem examination will help the investigation of a crime to find out the cause of death, to rule out the various possibilities of death, to clear, etc. Saying all that in a civil suit, in this, it is in fact a regular first appeal. Negligence alleged against were treatment was done. However, death of patient occurring in another hospital, absence of postmortem examination and report health is fatal. In the absence of an expert opinion regarding the cause of death, it is not possible to conclude that death of disease was just because there was no proper diagnosis or proper treatment received, just because there was uh, from the hospital against the negligence as alleged. Now, errors in judgment by itself may not amount to negligence. There is a catena of decisions and the exceptions are also there. And what is the standard of care? expected is that of a average or ordinary practitioner not of the highest nor any lower and also what is expected from uh, and what is to be evaluated by the court and what will be evaluated by the court is the scientific knowledge equipment the treatment methodology methodology etc that were available as on the date of the alleged incident you may not be justified in uh, uh, nobody will be justified in contending that later there were uh, new developments, etc., which the doctor should have taken into account, etc. No. What is the practice as on that day? And one word regarding consent also, the Samira Kohli case, which I shall uh, place the uh, decisions to you, uh, it has been specifically stated that consent is important. So as far as the patient party is concerned, unless and until the patient or the patient party is made aware of the possible pros and cons of the proposed procedure and the alternatives of the procedure, there is always a possibility that uh, uh, you may not be, uh, 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 you may be held liable for, uh, uh, the medical man can be held liable for negligence. Now, there is one more thing, which is known as cross padi or cross uh, medication. You may have learned uh, that is very interesting. Where in, uh, it is stated in Poonam Verma versus Ashwin Patel, AR 1996 Supreme Court 2111. A person who does not have knowledge of a particular system of medicine but practices in that system is a quack and a mere pretender to medical knowledge or to put it differently, differently a charlatan. The, the court held that anatomy of persons may be the same but the pharmacology is different. So unless and until you study that particular pharmacology, you are not supposed to prescribe any medicine. Prescribing medicines of another pharmacology gives a cause of uh, uh, gives rise to a cause of action to the patient party and a difficult uh, what you call situation for the concerned doctor. This was followed in um, uh, I'd say that uh, Martin de Sousa's case. Uh, there is a wrong uh, perception that Martin de Sousa was completely overruled in uh, Nikhil's super specialty. No, only that element where it was said that uh, Jacob Matthew case was interpreted in such a manner that. Even in civil cases, peer review or a, a review by a, a expert body is necessary. That aspect alone was overruled. The, otherwise, the judgment stands. It, uh, a professional may be held liable for negligence on the ground that he did not possess of the requisite skill which he professed to have. Thus, a doctor who has qualification in Ayurvedic, Unani or homeopathic medicine will be liable if he prescribes allopathic treatment. So let us see the basic principles which we have just seen. Number one is the legal mandate of the country or any civilized jurisdiction regarding uh, medical malpractice is care and not cure. No person will be held liable just because he is unable to cure a patient because cure is not something completely within the hands of uh, uh, the, the concerned medical man. So what is to be proved and established I, on either side is that either there was or there was no reasonable care, caution and attention. And the universally accepted standard medical protocol was either followed or not followed. But depending upon the uh, factual matrix and the evidence produced and the expert opinion that would be called for by the court, a decision of uh, medical malpractice or rather medical negligence will be rendered. Now let us see step by step how a uh, medical malpractice action can be or rather medical negligence action can be uh, initiated as well as defended. Number one, 
is sending of notice. Uh, the Supreme Court has held in, uh, I would say, a couple of decisions that uh, in the country, especially in India, it is an uphill task for the complainant or the plaintiff or the patient party to institute, sustain and succeed in a medical malpractice action because of different reasons, including uh, financial implications, lack of awareness, uh, non-availability of experts, and uh, uh, there is a possibility that one medical man may not necessarily speak against another. But that I found in my professional practice not to be not fully true because no medical man or a professional worth his name would state anything against accepted uh, scientific principles principles especially when there is always a possibility of it being contradicted by medical authorities or by another expert so usually it does not happen but uh, these are the things that has been taken note of now as i stated earlier it all revolves around the availability and non-availability of records so as far as the patient party who initiate the complaint it is imperative that he obtains the documents and for that matter it is very interesting to note that Earlier, even though it was thought that medical records were the property of the hospital, it has been continuously held by the Apex Court and the different high courts and other courts that it is not. There is no lien on medical records. Likewise, lawyers also does not have any lien on uh, what you call uh, uh, the case records for unpaid bills. If somebody does not pay you a bill, whether it's a medical man or a, a, a lawyer, the only remedy is to sue the other person for recovery of money and going by the present scenario, wait for the money to be uh, realized by your son, grandson or great grandson for that matter. Uh, not otherwise. You cannot withhold the, the, the case sheet or for that matter, case records. It has been settled. It's a settled position. And moreover, it is also necessary and it is a duty cast on the hospital that once a request is made by the patient for his case records, it has to be made available to him at the shortest possible time, not more than 72 hours. It has to be given. So uh, getting medical records is, in that manner is possible. And another way in which you may get the medical records or medical records could be uh, compulsorily shared is if you are initiating a police complaint, if you say that there is gross negligence. So for referring the matter to the peer the committee as envisaged by uh, the Jacob Matthew case, uh, the police will have to take into custody. They will have to seize the concerned medical records to be forwarded to the district medical officer or the concerned authority who constitutes the local body, uh, the expert panel for evaluation and to give advice to the investigating officer where there was gross negligence. That is another way of ensuring that the records are made available to you and the possibility of any manipulation in the records could be avoided. And uh, regarding manipulation of records, you can rest assured because nowadays uh, uh, it is very rare because uh, almost all the hospitals with their name have got different accreditations and there are periodic audits, etc. And uh, uh, EMR is almost implemented, electronic medical records. Any change or any manipulation done in that can be traced out. So uh, nowadays, even though it is happening, I am not very sure about that. But uh, the possibility of manipulation is uh, or, or tampering or doctoring the records is uh, very low. So that is one way of getting records. Once you get the records, instead of rushing to the court, because many a medical legal case is dismissed or even dismissed with cause because there is no proper cause of action and there is no element of negligence except for the perception of being wrong or, 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 or the grievance, individual grievance of uh, the concerned patient party. There is uh, uh, I would say, uh, no way, uh, unless and until you are able to uh, get proper instructions or rather uh, opinion from anybody who is learned in this field or you yourself doing your homework, once you get the uh, 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 medical records, it's better not to rush to a court even to a consumer fora. But once you get all these things and you're sure that uh, you, you feel that there is a cause for uh, uh, to be agitated before the, the, the court, it has to be proceeded with. Then 
there are two options it is not mandatory that you should be sending notice of course government institutions etc section 80 cpc is there i am not on that but as far as consumer protection is concerned there is no mandate that a, it should a complaint should be preceded by a notice but it is always advisable that a notice be sent so that we can get the version of the hospital or the medical man also and uh, likewise in the defense also the medical man also gets an opportunity if it's a genuine case he can explore the possibility of a settlement because the new consumer protection act gives much weightage uh, to mediation and mediation settlements of course there are some restrictions in the rule regarding uh, that institutionalized mediation may not be possible for some uh, medical negligence which results in death etc but uh, that's all when you go to the consumer court here we are not reached the consumer court so it is always possible that a opportunity a window can be open for mutual understanding and a possibility of an amicable settlement end of the day whether it is by litigation or otherwise what as far as consumer protection act is concerned it is only the compensation component that is relevant it's only the criminal prosecution wherein a doctor or the accused will be punished then we can file once all the details are there we can file the consumer complaint with all the documents that we have and likewise in defense the doctor also can request the patient party to submit the documents in the custody because the patient would have taken further treatment elsewhere and saying that the, it was on account of the earlier treatment then the uh, latter treatment or any other treatment records which might be in the possession of the complainant or the patient party could be called for so that a comprehensive reply can be given and once the comprehensive reply is uh, received the patient party will be able to proceed further on that then while filing complaint it has been uh, asserted in very many decisions that the specific act or omission of negligence has to be which uh, uh, which is uh, claimed to be negligence has to be stated because then and then alone a proper adjudication is possible i have seen couple of decisions wherein it has been said that only because the specific instances of negligence has not been uh, narrated the complaint is liable to be dismissed because from uh, the common evidence nothing could be brought out now it comes to the evidence stage in the evidence stage the complainant generally is examined once that is done it is equally important for both the parties to adduce expert opinion or evidence either in the form of an expert evidence in the box or by authoritative textbooks or decisions covering that to prove and establish the uh, different stance once that is done the final arguments will be heard and of course as all of you are well aware a decision will be rendered and regarding compensation component i'll say one of the cases that is <coughs> the highest uh, compensation uh, not just highest one of the high compensation that was given was kunal saha's case that is 2014 1scc 384 you may have a reference to that while uh, uh, computing the compensation component and uh, in that interest act 1978 was interpreted and it was stated Uh, specifically found that interest from the date of complaint has to be paid and not from the date when the decision was rendered because a special and specific provision of the interest act 1978 mandates so that is kunal saha's case 2014 1scc 384 you may also refer to v krishna kumar versus state of tamil nadu and others that is ar 2015 supreme court 836 if you want the cpj volume 3 2015 cpj 15 15 supreme court or scc for that matter 2015 9 scc 388 the supreme court has reasserted or reiterated that payment of compensation not only just in medical legal cases but in any case that comes before a consumer fora is not just to recompense the complainant but also to bring about a qualitative change in the attitude of the service provider so two it is two prong Uh, whatever expenses whatever loss damage injury that has been sustained by the patient party will have to be recompensed and also a further compensation just to make sure that such incidents may not recur in future and to bring about a qualitative change in the attitude of the service provider now execution then comes execution once uh, once you get a uh, judgment in your favor execution now uh, 72 uh, 71 and 72 unlike the confusion we had regarding 25 and 27 of the 
now uh, the uh, order 21 the provision relating execution as far as cpc is concerned has now been incorporated in the, our uh, uh, con uh, consumer protection act so that can also be uh, proceeded with now let us see a couple of decisions uh, now when i refer to the decisions what i want you to keep in mind and my request is that uh, the, the 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 ratio uh of these decisions can be utilized by both parties uh by the patient party as well as by the uh, uh doctor community the medical community uh why because fact situation determines the application of this legal proposition and before that uh, there was one another doubt that has been expressed in the uh by one of the participants that is uh a patient sustains injury in a motor accident and later he is treated in a hospital he claim he gets a claim under the motor accidents claims tribunal will it oust or will it uh, uh, in any way affect uh, the the uh, claim made before the consumer protection act for medical negligence there you may kindly note one decision which i could my, uh, lay my hand on volume 3 2006 cpj1 of the national commission Gidu Sapra and others versus Dr. B. L. Kapoor Memorial Hospital, wherein it was held. Claim before motor accidents claims tribunal pending. Present claim not based on accident but on alleged negligence of treating hospital and doctors. Two different causes of action for above said claims. Cause of action before MACT related to accident arising out of negligence of driver of vehicle. That before consumer fora for deficiency in rendering service or treatment by hospital and doctors. Complaint for such deficiency is maintainable. So uh, it may not be a defense saying that you had already approached the motor accidents claims tribunal and uh, you have got uh, 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 requisite relief. Likewise, another doubt that has been expressed is that uh, uh, whether free service given from hospitals is it covered of course ima versus vp shanda is a complete answer and also there are a couple of decisions which says that unless and until the hospital or the institution or that individual treats everybody free of charge if it treats somebody uh, i mean uh, charges some uh, some uh, patients and only treats some of free even the free patients are consumers but regarding government hospitals if it's completely free of charge uh, you can you may refer to 2015 4 CPJ 619 free service from government hospital and uh, regarding ESI hospitals you can refer to the Supreme Court Kishori Lal versus ESI Corporation that is volume 2 2007 CPJ 25 Supreme Court. Corresponding citation is AAR 2007 Supreme Court 1819 and also 2007 4 SEC 579. Members of the scheme and or family consumers, it is not gratuitous. Then in that decision, there is one more uh, 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 very important aspect which says that cause of negligence arises only when damage occurs. Claimant has to satisfy the three ingredients before claiming damage for medical negligence. That is regarding free services, etc., rendered by uh, government hospital. Uh, you may also refer to volume one, latest one, volume one, 2022, CPJ 69, Supreme Court. Nivedida Singh versus Asha Bharati and others. Volume 1, 2022, CPJ 69, Supreme Court. Wherein, a reading of the above para shows that a medical officer who is employed in a hospital renders service on behalf of the hospital administration. And if the service as rendered by the hospital does not fall within the ambit of 210, that's 1986 Act, of the Act being free of charge, the same service cannot be treated as service under Section 210 for the reason that it has been rendered by medical officer in the hospital who receives salary for the employment in the hospital. It was thus concluded that the services rendered by employee medical officer to such a person whom uh, such a person would therefore continue to be service rendered free of charge and would be outside the purview of Section 210 of the Act. In view thereof, we do not find any merits in the present appeal and the same is dismissed. 
that is uh, the one of the latest supreme court ruling in 2023 there is one let me just see one another later ruling uh, is volume 2 2023 cpj 327 national commission Manish Kumar versus All India Institute of Medical Sciences and others. That also may be looked into. Now regarding expert evidence. Uh, expert evidence is necessary. But one judgment uh, which took a different view but because of these facts and circumstances may also be kept in mind. That is Maharaja Agrasen Hospital and others versus Master Rishabh Shri and uh, Sharin and others. Volume 1, 2020, CPJ 3, Supreme Court. Wherein it was held, court is not bound by evidence of expert. Court should derive its own conclusions after carefully sifting through medical records, standard protocol followed, etc. And when the negligence is so palpably visible or rather it is on the face of it evident. There is no need for any further um, uh, expert evidence. In a specific case where unreasonableness in professional contact has been proven with regard to circumstances of that case, a professional cannot escape liability for medical negligence merely relying on body of professional opinion. That is volume 3, 2019, CPJ 1. Supreme Court, Arun Kumar Manglik versus Chiren, uh, Chireyu Health and Medicare Private Limited and others. And if there is an unreasonable decision, that also can be uh, looked into by the court and the decision rendered. That is Volume 2, 2019, CPJ 124, Supreme Court. Nand Kishore Prasad versus Dr. Mohib Hamidi and others. Now, let us see why uh, this uh, uh, medical malpractice actions or uh, medical uh, jurisprudence is not developing in our country uh, or rather uh, uh, we find it unsurmountable. Number one is lack of awareness. Many people in the country are not aware of the rights in cases of medical negligence and may not know how to take action, legal action. Then, of course, high cost of legal proceedings, even though we may say that consumer protection is uh, cost effective, etc. But uh, once you start the litigation, you know that it entails expenses. Then lengthy legal process. So many, many persons are uh, dissuaded from. Then limited access to medical records. In spite of all these uh, uh, legal mandates, it's next to impossible at times to get the relevant medical records, treatment records. Then insufficient evidence because uh, uh, we go by the grievance and not by empirical evidence as far as the patient part is concerned. Then, of course, there is lack of support also is there. Now, let us see uh, some of the recent decisions. And before that, let us put things in perspective by looking into uh, 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 different, uh, the difficult situation in which medical men are uh, placed. In uh, Mrs. Shandaban Muljibai Patel and others versus Breach Candy Hospital, and research center that is volume 1 2005 cpj 10 the national commission held in a high risk case accidental eventuality cannot always be controlled hence conclusion of deficiency in service cannot be drawn likewise uh, uh, the words of uh, lord denning in roe versus woolley versus the uh, roe uh, Ro and uh, woolley versus the ministry of health and uh, other 1954 volume 2 all england reporter 131, which has been uh, reproduced in many of our judgments, Supreme Court inclusive. Every surgical operation is an uh, is attended by risk. We are not, we cannot take the benefits without taking the risk. 
every advance in technique is also attended by risk doctors like the rest of us have to learn by experience and experience often teaches in a hard way few of the recent decisions which one has to look into if we are to move ahead in this specialized field would be dr mrs chandra rani akori and others versus dr m a meetu setupadi and others that is volume 2 2022 cpj 51 rendered by the apex court supreme court volume 2 2022 cpj 51 wherein the death of uh, 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 the patient was taken up to the apex court the court said that has to be kept in mind because a decision has to be rendered from the head and not from the heart the supreme court said in these words we realize the pain of losing her husband and the trauma she has suffered but that cannot translate into a legal remedy even death of a patient cannot on the face of it be considered to be medical negligence in the same vein bombay hospital and medical research center versus asha jaiswal and others volume 1 2022 cpj 3 supreme court unless and until there is expert evidence or medical records which shows negligence a decision cannot be rendered against the medical man the supreme court said sufficient material or medical evidence should be available before adjudicating authority to arrive at conclusion that death is due to medical negligence here the race ipsa locator principle was analyzed and the supreme court said thus for the application of the maxim race ipsa locator no less important a requirement is that the rest must not only bespeak negligence but pin it on the defendant it is not just by showing that something which ordinarily would not have happened has happened hence negligence has to be uh, inference of negligence has to be drawn the supreme court said it is not it should not only be speak negligence but it should pinpoint on the defendant and likewise the national commission has uh, uh, taken note of the fact that infection is a risk of all surgeries just because there is infection unless and until it could be shown that it was on account of any act or omission on the part of the hospital doctor or the staff of the hospital that the infection happened just because infection happened it cannot be said that it it all depends upon uh, the the patient so that is volume 2 2022 cpj 509 national commission upendra kumar versus nandeep i research and research center and others likewise the supreme court in uh, vinod jain versus sandoka durl uh, durlabji memorial hospital and others that is ar 2019 supreme court 1143 a doctor could not be said to be negligent if he was acting in accordance with a practice accepted as proper by a reasonable body of medical man in another case uh, when the court said that we have sympathy for the appellant but sympathy cannot translate into legal remedy uh, it is interesting to note that a parallel has been drawn in martin de souza case which has been reproduced continuously in the subsequent judgments i'll just read the relevant portion it's very interesting and illuminating in paragraph 42 there is a tendency to blame the doctor things have gone wrong and therefore somebody must be punished a lawyer cannot win every case in his professional career but surely he cannot be penalized for losing a case provided he appeared in it and made his submissions we are put to task and an example is drawn uh, or a parallel is drawn Uh, saying that just because a lawyer loses his case or a doctor loses a patient that does not by itself ipso facto indicate negligence unless and until it is able to be shown with empirical evidence uh, expert evidence and uh, legal principles which are applicable that it was on account of any act or omission on the part of that particular doctor that this uh, uh, which formed part of the causation which resulted in the consequence 
I see Dr. Kantika sir also here. Namaste sir. And I was just referring to one of your decisions right now, wherein uh, you had uh, uh, put it in a very, very interesting manner that uh, infection is uh, always a, 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 it's possible and uh, that by itself cannot be taken as an indication of negligence. Thank you, sir. And uh, there is uh, regarding consent uh, after the uh, the initial judgment. We we also have S K Junjunwala versus Doc uh, uh, Danwanti Kumar and another. That is volume two, 2019, CPJ 41. We need not sep uh, no need for separate consent for substitute surgery. Suffering of ailment by patient after surgery is one thing whereas suffering of any such ailment as a result of improper performance of surgery and that too with degree of negligence on the part of doctor is another thing so these are the recent developments and uh, the way in which uh, 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 the justice dispensation machinery is is viewing this particular aspect so when i say or when i am asked how a medical legal action can be initiated and continued. I'd say that these principles may be kept in mind. In the same vein, I'll also say that these principles also apply as far as defense is concerned. And uh, uh, to conclude, I would say few would agree uh, or disagree rather that delinquency, like in any other profession, need also to be dealt with sternly in the field of medicine. The reasons are not far away. We require uh, uh, judicial intervention because that is the only place wherein an aggrieved party. Just imagine, uh, why should the doctors or the medical man, and for that matter, if somebody is suing me as a lawyer, why should I be aggrieved? Because if I have a problem, the most civilized way and the only way available under the Indian constitution is to approach or to take recourse to legal remedies. So once a person has a genuine grievance, it is only natural that he takes recourse to legal remedies. So if there is proper documentation, if there is uh, proper uh, expert evidence adduced in the matter, and if you are subscribed to the universally accepted standard medical protocol, and uh, there was no act or omission, which a reasonable and prudent doctor in the given circumstances would or would not have done, there is no need to worry. It's only... Uh, litigation is part and parcel of the profession, any profession, because it is the only way in which a dispute can be resolved. What else can, do we have any other alternative? And uh, in Kusum Sharma and others versus Batra Hospital Medical Research, that is 2010 3 SCC. 2010 Volume 3 SCC 480. The law of negligence has to be applied according to facts and circumstances of individual case. No one can ignore that medicine is an evolving science. I emphasize it again because that will be my concluding remark. Uh, 2010, 3 SEC 480, Kusum Sharma and others versus Batra Hospital, Batra, Batra Hospital and Medical Research. The law of negligence has to be applied according to facts and circumstances of individual case. No one can ignore that medicine is an evolving science and there is no precise outcome of effect for every person. The operations involve certain calculated risk which cannot be denied because of complication in the operation. If some risk is done, the doctors cannot be held liable for negligence as the patient himself has consented to the risk involved in the operation. So I would uh, conclude my presentation and open up for uh, uh, discussions, if any, uh, by saying that uh, as far as India is concerned, we have got a well-balanced uh, administration uh, of uh, uh, or, or uh, justice dispensation machinery as far as medical negligence or malpractice actions are concerned. The decisions which have uh, contempt the medical man who has erred beyond the scope of permissibility under law is also the, whereas sufficient protection has been and is being afforded to those persons who have acted bona fide. And in spite of that, something has gone wrong. Just because something has gone wrong, nobody can hold. Just like in Martin's D'Souza, it has been said that no lawyer can be held liable just because he lost a case. He loses a case because he cannot win it. There is always a third party element coming in. For us, it is the judge. For them, it is the I mean, God and as well as the comorbidities or the specific characteristics of that particular patient. Thank you for the patient hearing. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. I'm just checking it out. Sandeep wanted to ask something.
Sandeep sir, you are not audible. You may have to unmute. No, oh, that's fine. Now, actually, today I was just checking it out. They changed some settings. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, very good evening, sir. First of all, a lot of thanks for giving this wonderful talk. I would just like to, uh, uh, you know, ask question in the sense from the very beginning, you have started with the Bolam case and uh, you have discussed four points where you discuss some error should be there. And to prove that error, some omission or commission that needs to be proved. And accordingly, the case will be, you know, weighed and it will be helpful in the uh, concluding the remarks. But my point is that, sir, because uh, patients, they are not, I'm talking about the patient perspective, not from the doctor perspective. My point is that, that uh, patients, they are not well versed with the medical terminology. And it is very likely that it is difficult to prove uh, uh, cases where some omission or commission has not been done or done and it will be difficult and uh, because this uh, and second point I would like to say because you have said that uh, in case of uh, Jacob Matthews this uh, your local area administrator will have to induce some uh, the first they will have to see whether some error has been commissioned or not but in a, uh, if you take, I'm not talking about the metros, if you take the cases on the district level, there are not the expert evidences are there. So the benefit of doubt is going, giving to the doctors only. So in such circumstances, what would be the best from the patient perspective, how he will deal, although the documentations they are with, with the available with the hospitals only, but what else documentation will be required and how it will be helpful for a patient to fight a good case. Sir, I could, uh, I can only answer in this manner because uh, rights and responsibilities vest in everybody. So whether you are the uh, complainant or the opposite party, there are certain obligations or certain responsibilities of assisting the court to come to a correct conclusion. So the liability or the responsibility to discharge the initial burden squarely falls on the complainant. But it can be discharged in very many ways, including like a said there are certain uh, legal principles which could be utilized by saying that the thing speaks for itself or you can say that it's so glaring that nothing need be done i walked into the hospital now i am in a persistent or my uh, my other uh, patient is in a persistent vegetative state all those things it is for the doctor and the hospital to explain but when once you make an allegation that there was a negligence on the part of a uh, doctor like i said earlier it is akin to asking seeking capital punishment you are asking for professional death sentence of that party he would have uh, practiced for 30, 40 years, built up his career, built up his reputation. And now on account of this specific allegation, one cannot justify in requesting that for me, the evidence act or for that, uh, I mean, the way in which uh, adjudication has to be diluted. There, you will have to educate yourself. A responsibility is cast. I am ignorant. I will always remain ignorant, cannot be hurt. It has to be in such a manner that you got a grievance. There are uh, uh, avenues, there are bodies which will assist you. And there are doctors who feel that if something has gone, th that doctor is not speaking against any other doctor. He's only speaking for the medical profession. There are. And these persons, these experts will not. In my experience, I have found that 90% of these persons, 10% of course will always be there, uh, uh, will never speak against the truth or the basic scientific data because they risk their reputation. They put their reputation at stake when they enter the box. Once they give an opinion, it can always be evaluated, it can be contradicted and it can be supported or negated by further evidence by way of textbooks or by way of other evidence. So that can be done. And of course, they speak a different language altogether. We, I agree if we are talking on the patient. But the, just imagine a doctor coming to the hospital Uh, I mean, a doctor coming to the uh, court, we speak an entirely different language. We say in execution, delivery with police aid. Will a doctor understand that? So difficulties are there in, uh, on both sides. It has to be found. We'll have to educate ourselves and we'll have to learn from, I mean, uh, something. Uh, uh, the court is also very uh, compassionate as far as adducing of evidence. That compassion cannot uh, uh, translate itself into a verdict because a decision has to come from the heart, uh, from the head and not from the heart. So uh, I'm sure that any properly instituted medical negligence case if there is a negligence on the part i'm sure that uh, uh, antikar sir is also there he has rendered decisions either way 
in the national commission and in 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 in, in uh, that it all depends upon the facts and circumstances of the uh, uh, matter uh, because sir can you just unmute uh, dr kantika sir you will have to unmute him sir sir please unmute sir uh, hi sir advocate sham can i add something oh sure please sir the query was that the patient cannot prove because he is handicapped by not getting the expert opinion that is the that is the notion yes because if the patient is not getting in the jacob matthew it is clearly said the case to be referred to the district authority or any if it is Correct. a big city that will be referred to district authority or health department or medical college yes now even then the if the patient is unable to get the the opinion the bench can decide when the case is under adjudication the bench can decide and bench will request a bench will request the constitution of expert board from the some medical college in that case the patient or the complainant should uh, should uh, apply or request the court or the bench send the matter for the opinion because he uh, certainly he no doctor will give opinion in the uh, other cases few doctors few experts are giving but for the fair justice if the bench feels bench will send because because in the nikhil super specialty it has clearly defined no every case need not be referred for the expert opinion the bench will take the decision and it will send sir in, in nikhil so, uh, super specialty case it only clarified martin de souza by saying that it is not necessary for instituting but yes yes prohibition in sending yes yes so very nice <laughs> after long yes, time sir. after last time we met in bangalore we are not met we'll meet sir yes yes okay thank you sir yes vikas yeah just okay. Yeah, Praful. Yeah, good evening, sir. My question is regarding the number, rising number of cesarean operations in the country, and the future of medical jurisprudence regarding this. Sir, uh, I I can straight away answer. Of course, uh, uh, other medical men are also here. Uh, the problem which we had a study on a different platform altogether, wherein this rising number of cesarean need not necessarily because of the recommendation of the medical fraternity, but by the patient party or the uh, uh, the pregnant woman who does not want to undergo the agony of uh, a normal delivery they at times they request because we have birthing boutiques now just imagine how can they come unless and until there is demand for it of course there might be stray incidents wherein uh, unnecessary cesarean operation has been insisted and done but that can be i mean unless and until there is a fetal distress or a cord around the neck etc there are certain indications wherein uh, that the life of the fetus is compromised and it requires intervention or there will be certain uh, uh, situations wherein the mother also have certain conditions which may not be uh, what do you call uh, in conformity in having a regular uh, uh, labor it is being done but like you said if it has been unnecessarily done it is a act which a reasonable and prudent doctor would not have done in the given circumstance and so squarely falling within the definition of deficiency in service and negligence which can be taken to task but a concerted movement regarding that i am not very sure whether it is possible because there is no empirical data which says that there is a uh, what you call concerted move in 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 substituting uh, cesarean surgery for regular surgeries i am not aware of that Hello. Good evening, everybody. Am I audible? Good evening, Nabe. Where are you? Yeah. Yeah, uh, I'm in, in Dubai. Dubai, Dubai, Dubai. My question is regarding the infertility, that is, the IVF procedures. Yes. As India is uh, having a lot of infertility issues, so. many of the aged and unaged i mean you know old age people also go for the uh, infertility procedures so what is your take on that if there is no conceiving of the baby and they have to pay loan they take loan on the respective procedures abey that so do you have some insight on that thank you abey thank you for putting that question we have one or two decisions centered wherein no cure 
means negligence or no result means negligence is not something that can be applied in medical science so ivf etc you run the risk and the, you have got certain protocols and procedures in place how it is to be done when it is to be done who all can undergo what all should be the formality we got strict procedures applicable if the concerned institution has followed all the procedures that has been established by law and no element of evidence uh, negligence could be brought out in the uh, implementation or in the procedure that has been done then just because the par party did not conceive or did not give the required uh, or resultant result will not be an indication of uh, any negligence and uh, you may not be able to proceed. But otherwise, if you are able to show that some act or omission on their part or if there was any failure to follow the procedures and protocols which are in place. In India, we have got strict procedures. Who all can undergo, what all can undergo and IVF, uh, all those things it is covered and governed by strict rules. If that is being followed and uh, no element of negligence otherwise could be attributed, the fact that the patient did not get the result or there was no, um, the patient did not conceive may not be available for you to uh, initiate an action against uh, the hospital or the uh, doctor. But rest assured that there are monitoring uh, agencies, authorities, uh, they are looking into it and any aberration or any sort of uh, uh, inadequacy or any, any sort of uh, violation is uh, taken strict action against. Yeah. Thank you, Sham. And like you, we started. So Sham was quite rangeen with full of knowledge, and we have all gained from. I think Shankar. Uh, I had unmuted him, but there was a lot of vibrations. I can just check it out. Yeah. Shankar has uh, put that. But uh, the, just a question. Sir, am I audible? Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, audible, please. Uh, sir, uh, if at all uh, a government hospital offering paid services refuses to provide uh, emergency treatment, can I invoke both Article 226 and the provisions of uh, Consumer Protection Act? And if at all I have to choose only one, which would be the most uh, efficacious remedy? Uh, I would say that uh, you can uh, you can uh, uh, adopt uh, the procedure before the uh, High Court, uh, that is uh, 226, or for that matter 32. Uh, Read your section because that will be speedy and uh, most cost effective, and that too when it is from. And regarding compensation component, maybe uh, you may have to approach a consumer for a because a proper uh, escrocia uh, payment uh, and other things may be possible in public law remedy. But uh, an adequate compensation for the loss, etc., if it requires adjudication and adducing of evidence, then uh, the High Court may not, or uh, the, the reduced section may not give you that relief. But it can definitely be taken up, and the judgment rendered by the High Court can be utilized in the consumer case or other case which you would like to proceed. So, uh, those were the questions. Thank you, Sham, for sharing your knowledge. And thank you to all the participants who have been watching us live on the YouTube as well as on this platform. Thank you, everyone. Stay safe, stay blessed. Namaskar. Thank you.